Hi, I'm Jason Weston from MD Anderson in Houston, Texas. I'm here at the ASH 2015 meeting in Orlando, Florida. Um, I think some of the key things that are coming out of this meeting that could be relevant for practicing hematologists, oncologists, are that large cell lymphoma is a very heterogeneous disease, a lot of heterogeneity in this disease, and that the standard one-size-fit-all approach of treating everybody with RCHOP, I think is thankfully rapidly becoming a thing of the past. I think that's no longer going to be acceptable to just have the pathology report say large cell lymphoma and that be a slam dunk that they get RCHOP therapy. The specific scenario that thus far has proven this paradigm, and I think there will be others, is the situation of the so-called double hit lymphomas. Double hit lymphoma is a newly recognized entity of a high grade large cell lymphoma and it's defined at our center and at other centers by a translocation that involves the MYC oncogene as well as BCL2 or BCL6. MYC has to be there, BCL2 or BCL6 interchangeable. In those patients, a retrospective series from our center as well as from a cooperative group setting, both showed that the therapy of RCHOP was dramatically inferior to more intensive therapies. And I think that that is a situation where patients don't do well with RCHOP therapy and it should not be their initial induction therapy. So I think one of the main take home uh, from some of the scientific sessions here at ASH has been that pathologists have to be looking for this. If they don't, the hematology oncologist has to ask the pathologist, this is a high grade lymphoma, perhaps we should look for, to perform FISH to look for this double hit scenario. And if that's the case, Referral to an academic center to consider a more intensive therapy is very appropriate. I, I think that managing these people in the community can be quite a challenge. And as I said, art shop would not be sufficient therapy in, in my estimation. Uh, the logical thing to do for these people is to enroll them on a smart clinical trial. They potentially could incorporate some of these new agents, some of this exciting new data which is generated from uh, relapsed patients with single agent drugs is now being incorporated into the frontline setting, combination clinical trials. And I think that that is really a key step uh, to help improve the disease outcomes in the setting. Patients that receive frontline RCHOP therapy and then fail with double hit lymphomas do extremely poorly in the relapse setting. So there's a narrow window of opportunity to try and improve outcomes for these people. If they've already received induction therapy and failed, it's, it's, it's almost too late at that time point to have the dramatic benefits we'd like. There are great therapies in the relapse setting that could potentially be beneficial, but ideally we'd like to treat these patients very upfront uh, with smart clinical trials. Well, I think, I think another very exciting advance that's coming out of this ASH meeting uh, is the introduction of a new wave of technology that can really be beneficial for patients with lymphoma. There have been a number of abstracts at this meeting which are discussing the concept of using blood-based minimal residual disease technology. And the terminology of minimal residual disease may not be exactly correct, but basically of monitoring the disease burden. MRD, minimal residual disease, typically is used in a setting where somebody's achieved a CR and now we're measuring for relapse. These new technologies can do that, but they could also potentially monitor during therapy. And I think both are somewhat unique and both could potentially be game-changing technologies for our patients. If we could determine at the end of therapy if somebody's achieved a true CR, not just on the PET scan, but if we have a much more sensitive, several orders of magnitude more sensitive test, perhaps we would not need long-term imaging, long-term follow-up, or, or could declare cure at a much earlier time point for our patients. Conversely, we could potentially identify people who are going to fail and enroll them in therapies that may be able to address a much lower burden of disease as opposed to waiting until they develop clinically relevant, fulminant progression and there's too much to take care of at that time point. The second thing that I outlined of monitoring response to therapy, if we could identify patients during their initial therapy that were highly likely to fail, they weren't responding appropriately, they were showing regrowth in a molecular standpoint, a much more sensitive tool could pick that up. Those would be patients that would logically come off of their initial therapy and could be evaluated on a clinical trial, either as a randomized trial where they could continue on their therapy versus randomized to something else, or just have enough confidence in the assay that we quit initial therapy and transition them to something much more targeted. So that is not quite ready for prime time. There are a number of groups that are trying to commercialize these tests, so I think these may come into clinical practice in the next couple of years. But I think, again, that's another avenue where patients need to be enrolled in clinical trials because many of these assays are currently being featured in patients treated on a trial. 
and having that level of data could really dramatically inform clinical practice across the board for patients with lymphoma if we had these sensitive tools.